Creepers stalk every town and social network looking for young victims to groom. Occasionally they succeed, but what happens when the police interrupt their plans? I just don't want to be in no trouble or nothing. I'm just trying to be uh, like friends to people. That's all. Y'all got it out of the car. I ain't got it out of the car. Here are 11 cases where heroic cops rescue children from pedos just moments before disaster. Meet 40-year-old Robbie Wilt, who on July the 2nd of 2021 was reported to police by a terrified neighbor who witnessed him snatch up a six-year-old girl while she was coloring in her grandparents' driveway. He then put her in his car and sped away, but another neighbor followed behind the vehicle, providing a description and the license plate number to police. The vehicle was registered to Robbie, and thankfully police located the car while it was still on the road. Put your hands in the air. Stay right there. Stay right there. I'll keep your hands in the air. Turn around. Back towards me. Turn around and back towards me. Back towards me. Back. Keep walking 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 back. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay on the ground. Open the passenger door! It's just her. Right on the ground. On the ground. Open the passenger door! Driver passenger. You got a little girl in the front seat. Little girl in the front seat. Hello. It's okay. She's clear. She's clear. It's okay. The officers have successfully separated Robbie and the victim, with the child appearing to be uninjured. But Robbie's going to be pretty hurt when he figures out that kidnapping or depriving the parents or guardian of the custody of a minor is a Class B felony, Kentucky Statute Section 509.040. This means that if Robbie doesn't take the plea deal, he'll have to spend a minimum of 10 years in prison, but could receive as many as 20 years for the kidnapping charge alone. Do you have any injuries? No. Okay. I don't know what happened. He just picked me up. He picked you up? You don't know him? This is Uncle. This guy, we don't need to make cancel. You're fine. I just want to. Your daddy's coming, okay? Daddy. Okay, he's coming. Daddy. Daddy. He's coming. ID's in the car. Three ten, I'm okay. Does he live here? All right, just wait right there then. If you don't know him, just wait right there. He's on Cannon Road. You search him? Yeah, search him. I don't know if he's going to hang Radio to Dad at the house? No. Your grandpa was watching you? Yeah, but my dad's coming in. Oh, okay. Oh, your mom at the bush, you work? Go to our place, that's all I know. Oh, okay. Were you riding your bike? He didn't take me, he just said he's gonna give me. Okay, can anybody advise me that she needs him? EMS? Are you hurt? No, he didn't do anything wrong. He said he was gonna show you a puppy? Yeah, he's my mom's friend, I think. He said he knows my mom. No, it's just my mom and dad's real quick. Is this your car? Can I sit you on the back of this car? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Is that it's a okay. How old are you? Yeah. You're big. I don't know if he's still here or not. I don't know. I hope not. 
she said that he wanted to show her a puppy, and he was a friend of her mom's. You back. Okay. Okay. You know those people? Okay. You want to go to your grandpa? Okay. Is this your brother? Grandpa, right here. Okay. Can you stay over here? Please hold her yeah. center, make sure. You want to take her with you? Just come check her out. Yeah, so are you okay? He said he's going to go here. Yeah, his mom was dad's actually. Oh, what? Yeah. Can't, can't come here. Let's look out and see the bread. I'm guessing Ben know her at all. I don't know. The dirty look he gave us when he walked past to get set in car speaks a different story. No. I don't see a No. I'm bashing the same. I wonder if he went, something's wrong. I better take this kid back. That's kind of what I was thinking, too. To the house. I think he was going to drop her off somewhere near the house. That's what I think. It, I mean, it doesn't matter. He's done it. It, do, it doesn't matter. Fucked up individual has to be like, hey, let's go snatch a kid. After the young victim was reunited with her family, Robbie was transported to jail and booked on one charge of kidnapping a minor. He would end up accepting a plea deal, and as a result, he was sentenced to 13 years in prison without the possibility of parole. And upon release, he'll be required to register as an offender. A well-deserved punishment for traumatizing a defenseless child? He's no better than this nightmare boss, though, who tried to take advantage of his employee and proceeded to lie terribly about it. Are there cameras in there, in the break room? Huh? Are there cameras in the break room? Sure. Are there cameras? On March the 31st of 2023, the father of a 17-year-old employee working at Regal Georgian Movie Theater called the police to report that she'd been touched inappropriately by her 60-year-old boss. He had allegedly cornered the woman in the break room and aggressively attempted to kiss her before she could slip away. Yes, sir. Hey, man. So, what's, what's going on? I don't know, sir, because that, that girl is working at the, what do you call, break room. I gave her the job to clean the break room, and after 20 minutes also, she didn't come out, right? She went there with the broom and the dustpan, right? Then I went there, then I checked she's playing with the mobile. Then I charged her. Mm. Why, what you are doing here now, it is already 20 no, minutes, but you didn't clean up and come out because a lot of, not only the clean the floor and clean the, uh, what do you call, tabletop, and they have to mop also. <laughs> but then I charge her what you are doing here. Then he, she asked me, okay, may I go to the toilet? Then, okay, then I let her to go to the toilet. Then that's all, I don't know. After that, then his, her father came and charged me, you have charged my, cha touched my daughter. What, what do you, when you say charge, what do you mean by that? Charge me, I asked her, why you, what you are doing here so much time, 25 minutes. Mm. So it is 10 minutes job, what you are doing here? Just, 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 I asked her. Okay. Then she asked, okay, excuse me, can I go to the washroom? Then I told, okay, suddenly came that her father and he almost tried to hit me. You touch my daughter and this and that, all, 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 all the things. Are there cameras in there, in the break room? Huh? Are there cameras in the break room? Sorry? Are there cameras, video no, cameras no, sir, in the No, break room? there is no camera in the video room. But uh, the outside is there, the lobby we can see. See, you can go and see the situation. Okay. And there's no cameras in the break room? No, sir. Was anybody else in there? No, sir. It was just the two of you guys? Yes. Okay. How long has she been working here? Here? How long was she working? She's maybe nearly one year, I think. One year? Uh huh. Okay. Has there any ever been any issues between you two, the no. two of you guys? Never. What's up, y'all? Uh, do y'all know anything about what's going on with these two? Because I'm a very respectful person. So I'm a 60 years old, <laughs> so I'm not going to touch the girls. Well, that's good, because if he did, that would constitute sexual assault in the state of Georgia. Georgia law finds it especially egregious when the assault is perpetuated by a person who has supervisory or disciplinary authority over another individual. According to Georgia Code 1665.1, thus a suspect is liable to spend up to 25 years in prison in order to pay a hefty $100,000 fine if convicted. I'm sorry, Sagan. I said, do y'all know anything about what's going on with these two? What do you mean? The, exactly? the manager and the girl outside? Oh, she told me that he tried to kiss her. There's Oh, yeah, there is? Yes. Oh, he just said it wasn't. He just said it wasn't. There is. There's a big one, but then yeah. she told me it happened in like a corner. I mean, if there's a camera, yeah. who yeah. works the camera? Uh, which which break room was it? Can y'all show me? So it was in here. Yes, there is. All right.
Let's see if we can figure some things out. Who uh, who knows how to work the camera system here? I know, I can see the cameras. Okay, well there's a camera in the break room. Yes, but it, it does not work many years. Okay, I can call my GM and I ask. Yeah, let's see, let's see if we can get into that. It's better, right? Can you put on speaker for me? Okay, sure. Hello. Hi, Nuri. Yeah. The police officers are here. Uh, they okay. they asked me that hmm. any uh, what do you call any uh, camera in the Can break room. Can I speak to him? Yes, we do have a break room cameras. Hey, Mr. Nuri. Am I saying your name yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm um, well. Um, so, <laughs> so apparently there was a situation that may have happened in the break room. Um, yeah. We're trying to get everything figured out. I see that there is a camera in the break room. Yes, sir. Are you able to come um, show the footage of that camera or anything? Yes. Um, I, I'm way out, like, uh, at Highway Atlanta, but my assistance is, she's on. Thank you. Okay. Be oh. <laughs> my bad. I'm having now is he kept trying to say that there was no cameras in the break room, but I went in there and it's clear to see that there are cameras in right there. This is where the boss's story was about to begin unraveling. The assistant general manager would be there at any moment to play back the surveillance footage, which would show the boss entering the break room and chatting with the victim before grabbing her hip, tilting her face up towards his, and going in for a smooch. The victim was then seen slapping his hands away and hurrying out of the room, at which point she reportedly locked herself in the bathroom and called her father. Hey, how you doing? Where is the manager of the He's assistant? in the office. Y'all want the keys to the office so y'all can go back. Can you just uh, leave us up there? Why are you going to the office now? Yeah, I don't know. Nana State Charles. Hey. Laura George. What are you doing? 8880. Oh, we got somebody on the way to check the camera. Huh? That's, a, that's what we got somebody on the way to do. Oh, yeah. Hello, gentlemen. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. 425. Uh, I'm here Oh. All right, you need to take it back a little? Yeah, can you go back some? Uh, Mr. Wasanta, do me a favor. Go ahead and turn around and put your hands behind your back for him, okay? Ready? Turn around and put your hands behind your back. Okay. I need your radio and your keys for now, honey. Yes, yeah, so what's going on? Done yet? You're being arrested, sweetie. What, what, what have you done? Um, we're touching her. I didn't touch her, but I get close to her to charge her, like this. Hey. No. Okay. Lisa, Lisa. Lisa. Okay, I have to call my wife first. Okay. Put your hand right there. Okay. Um, give me your wife's number and I'll call her. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. You come on. Yes, just wait. I have to get the call this one. Uh, he'll grab your phone when she's done, but you're coming Hi, with me. Hi. Um, okay. All right, go ahead and hop in for me. Yeah, I got the video. We got the video. We did see what happened. See so what happened in there. So, I know that's your baby girl, yeah. so let's stay cool, okay? Yeah. Um, in the video, he does come in the room, he walks up to her, he kind of puts his hand close to her lower back, and then he grabs her face and tries to lean in to kiss her. He, he's definitely going for the sexual battery, okay? That was a minor. The man would subsequently be arrested and transported to the police station where he was booked on charges of felony sexual assault and misdemeanor evidence tampering. Taking advantage of someone under your supervision is a different level of creepy, but taking advantage of your own family, well, that's even worse. Lying, um, lying, 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 everybody's lying but you. In February of 2017, Abraham Grajales was caught by surprise when police confronted him at his home, accusing him of engaging in inappropriate actions with his two young granddaughters. The abuse allegedly occurred for years, spanning from the time they were four years old until the age of 13, and after receiving a report of abuse, Abraham was promptly brought to the police station for questioning. Abraham, can you still say your full name for me? Uh, Abraham, in Spanish? No, in English. Okay, Abraham Grajales. And uh, you did the birth? So I'm gonna be. I got. I got in the song. I can't read. I can. Okay. I can read and I can. Uh, how do you say? I can write. Uh, yeah. Okay. I. I many years ago in Manhattan. I used to work in Manhattan. Okay. I hit my head. Okay. For the accident, and the, one of the boiler, and I, uh, I was not in coma, but I was real bad. Wow. So I forgot everything. Okay. So I want you to know that. Okay, good. Okay. Well, I mean, thank you for telling me that. Okay. Um, so what is your date of birth? Uh, A18, A, A, A I believe. Okay, and your address? Do you know your address? Uh, my address is where you got to me. That's my address today, right? It's, uh, 
Uh, how long have you been married? 46 years. 47 years. 47 years. Yeah. Hmm. She's my hand, my right hand. Any kids? We have one daughter. What's her name? Uh. Yeah. And where's now? Uh, you live, she's a. Okay. When was the last time you talked to Long time. But she never get along with me. No? Why not? I don't know. There's gotta be something. No, because really, uh, I don't see him no more. You, the mother took it. Okay. And I, so uh, when, when she was about 18, I saw her a couple of times. Okay. Yeah. And what about when she was a baby? <coughs> like growing up, you didn't see her growing up at all? No. Okay. What, what are their names? Uh-huh. Uh, no, the first one. Okay, she's the oldest? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. And then... Uh-huh. And... Uh, but, uh... I'll say, I'll say but, uh, two months. Two months? Yeah. Okay. Why so long? I never... All, all the time working. Yeah. You're working or he's working? No. Because we, me, my, my wife went to see it, the mm -hmm. kid. Uh, but I don't see him almost for three months. So you don't have any issues with? No, I don't have no issue with that. And nothing with? No problems. No problem. N never problems. No, no fights. No fights. No. No arguments. No. Well, do you have any idea why you're here right now? No. None. No. It's weird because we've been here for. A little while now. Um, you went to your house. You haven't asked me why you're here. Uh, well, I, I asked him my house. What happened? Yeah, I said I just want to talk to you. And you want to talk to me? So I was scared. I, I be, I be angry with you. I say maybe somebody got killed and, and say I did it. What? Well, I don't know. Did you kill somebody? No, I don't know. The detectives were well aware that Abraham already knew why he was there, and if they can get him to admit that his strained relationship with his daughter was over his conduct with his granddaughters, they can finally get to the meat of the conversation. So they dig further into the uncomfortable topic of him and his daughter's family. All right, well, it says that you guys haven't been getting along too good lately. No, I don't think so. Yeah, he said that. That's yeah. right. I'm not making that up. Uh -huh. So what's been going on? What, what's the argument about with? I don't know what he said. Because he always says something about himself. I don't know. I really I don't know. What did, what did he say about? He say, ah, oh, you guy you always talking, you guy. But you know, I don't, I don't, no, no attention to him. Okay, so he's mad at you because you're talking. So. So sometimes no me, but my wife is getting his wife's eye, you know. It's no way uh, Maybe my wife is uh, she's Christian, she will go to church. And sometimes he tell her what to do, he don't like it. So maybe that's what it is. What'd you tell him to do? Oh, she said go to the church, uh, get for the kid, uh, things like that, you know. To say, okay. oh, nothing, nothing bad. So be careful with the kids. What does that mean? Like what she was... always, she always say she always not only they told the they told the, be careful. Well, today bad bad thing happened. Be careful for the children. All thing, you know. But like what? I mean, if you're telling somebody to be careful for something, you can you saw something that they did that was not safe. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out what that was. No, you said no, be no. careful. She she said go, 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 we go, we care for them. Okay. So. No, I'm just curious what, you know, really nothing bad. if they're doing something that's not safe, maybe no, we can I don't help. No, 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 Okay. So. What is his kid's names? Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh. No, I'm sorry. Uh. Okay. And. 
Abraham was just informed that he was being accused of a very serious crime. However, he hasn't probed for any more details about what was said and why, like an innocent person might. Forgetting to ask these common sense questions is typical of people who already know the answers to them. She said that from the time she was about four years old uh -huh. until she was 13, uh -huh. that you'd molested her oh my God. on multiple occasions. No, no way. Oh that, my God, I don't believe this. That you, you touched her vagina with your fingers, that you put your mouth on her vagina. Oh my God. That you forced her to... You made me cry. You said that you forced her to um, give you oral sex. Oh no, that's not true. That you forced her to touch a penis. Oh my God. Um, and then um, in June, mm -hmm. she didn't want to go to your house anymore. And she started crying when she was going to be left at your house while um, the parents went out, out of town for work. And uh, then she told what happened. And then she said, yeah, that happened to me too. Oh my God. Why would they say that about you? I don't know. Really, I don't know. I, even you, I know you say because my business said to you, but I don't believe that. They said it. I, why? I don't know. That's why I want to know. That's why I'm talking to you. I mean, I have to hear that. So, but you got two girls saying the same thing. Are you like that? Uh, yeah. Why? Why uh, never say nothing about me? The other ones said the same thing too. They never lived with me. She said that when she was very young, that, that you molested you her see, also. You see, it's not true. She never lived with me. Not even, not even one week. The mother took her away from me. But why would three people come uh, forward? Yeah, all I of a since it, something, something's going on. Why would they do that? Uh, also said that um, she thinks that your wife was known was known about what was going on. That she oh knew my God. what you were doing. That's my wife. Oh well. You know, it's not true. It's not true. She said that um, you started. Touching her when she was four. My God. And then um, when she was about 11 years old, that's what he said. She said that's when he started performing oral sex on her. Oh, Jesus. No, no way. That's not true. And she said that happened very often. Now she's now. Um, I can't believe that this child. I can't believe this. And she said recently, the most recent incident happened in June. June of last year. No, it's not so true. And then uh, you went true. to her house to drop off, um, drop off food. He was in his room playing loud music, and she was on the phone with her friend. You yeah. remember that? No, no. And you were knocking on the door, telling her to open the door that you brought food for her. Uh, well, you know, it's far away where I live, where they live. 
It's not that far. Well, for me walking, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't know. For me, a far away. Hmm. You know? Yeah. So. Uh, but she said that she was on the phone with her friend, and um, the friend she had like a FaceTime, and she uh -huh. dropped her phone, and the phone stayed on, and her friend was able to hear. To hear what? I don't know. I haven't talked to her yet. Oh, I don't know. That's not true. And she said That's that true. you were fighting with her, and that you tried taking her pants off. Oh, my God. And you were hitting her, and that um, she was screaming for and then she came out of the room, and then you got up, and you left the room, and you went down, and you went out of the room in that area. And then um, she asked her what was wrong, and she said that she was just sick, and then thought nothing of it. But he remembers that though. He remembers you being at the house. One time they give me, uh, when I go for my white kid, mm -hmm. I love the dog. They got two dogs, one little, uh, and I always take care of the dog. Okay. But they never there. They're always in school working. Yeah. So you go to the house to walk the dog? One time. No, no walk, just feed it because they're always out. Okay. A couple times. Describing very similar situations about you. I don't know. I can understand that. That's uh, how could that happen true. without it being true, Abraham? No, but let me let me, let, let me tell you. Yeah, it shocked me to hear this. You don't look shocked. I'll be honest with you. Uh, well, that, you can say that. I did. But uh, to me, it's not true. Okay. You know. Would you make yourself available to do a lie detector test? Oh yeah. Okay. Because. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I tell you right now, but like I the say, allegations I, are so I, strong against I you. I want it, I want it, uh, I don't have no money for a lawyer, but I want a lawyer to, to, yeah. to, to be in my, to, you know? Yeah. To, because right now, you, uh, you believe what they say, I, I say it's not. I can tell you, I can see their face, you know? and when you talk to them, yeah. I'm telling you that their, their, the, the way they tell their story and the hurt and the pain it's real. It's no, you can't. No. You can't. You know, unless it's not, it's not real. It's not true. Are it's you, not true. They, 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 are the girls? Are the girls liars? Well, what I can say. Answer me. You know, to be the lie. Okay, okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm not saying. Uh -huh. Are they liars in general? Like you know them to be, in the past, untruthful. Like do they tell a lot of lies? Well, they never lie to me. Are, are they bad girls? No, I don't say they're bad girls. They, they make see them. How can I say they're bad? They're bad. Well, you if know? it's the truth, it's the truth. No, no, you can you know, it's so prime me to say that too. Uh -huh. You know? I know it's always, uh, you know, it makes you stories. I'm kind of confused about, um, yeah. said that in June, he told you why he didn't want to have contact with you. He said he told you that he knew what you did to his girls. Okay. So the fact that you're acting so surprised and shocked today has me a little confused. So that's because you're acting like you haven't heard this before, but yeah. telling us you have heard this before. You do know that the girls have said this stuff before. No, no, no. That's not true. So lying, um, lying. Lying, lying, everybody's lying but you? No, I don't say, well, I say the truth, I don't did it. He said no. that he specifically told you He's, that he knows what you did to his daughters yes. and for you not to have any contact with him. You say he, he told everybody, no? I don't know if he told everybody. Oh, okay. He said he told you. No, no, he don't never tell me. Now, you said you have some memory issues. Uh -huh. Is it possible that this happened and you don't remember? No, no. Have you had any issues with or with that would make no. them make this up? No, I don't know. I, well, I don't know why they make this up. And can you tell us why they would lie about such a thing? This is a big uh, deal. It is a big deal. Why well, a big deal? Can I you think know. of anything they would have to gain by making this up? No. Have no. you ever heard of make this stuff up about anybody else? No. So, so this is uh, like uh, now because you say I remember one time my wife was in the house and say don't touch my private and my wife would even touch her. And I say to my wife, be careful, be careful. How old was she then? 
You think that's because you were already touching her private? No. She didn't want anybody else touching her private? I never touched it. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I swear, and the Bible, I swear, I cannot do it. I love him so much, you know? Maybe you love him too much. No, 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 the way you think, you say it, you know. I love because they you know, and I, and I respect them, and they, they respect, they respect me too, you know. So. Abraham's attempt at appearing outraged was lukewarm at best. In fact, he didn't seem to be displaying much of any kind of emotion. If anything, his rigid posture and monotone voice indicated that the cogs in his head had been turning the entire interview. But no excuse he'd concocted was going to save him from what was coming. Have you, have you ever had to punish them for anything? No, I never punished them. No discipline at all? No. Never had no. to spank them? No. Maybe my, 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 my own sons. The one they used to punish the two of the, of my wife. Mm -hmm. You know? The, for me, they got away with everything. No, they got away with, uh, you know. Have you ever hit? No. Never? Never. 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 Can you give us a reason why we should not believe them? There's three of them. I don't know what happened to that. I don't know who put in something in his mind because she's saying this. You know? So you talk to Talk to Well, generally it's uh, kids, and she's technically right. she's still a kid. No, no, no. Okay, I'm talking about no. Generally, if kids make up a story, they can't stick to it. They don't know details, and if you question them about it, too much, they aren't consistent in their statements. She is extremely consistent. She was asked the same question probably five different ways, and her answer was the same every time. So there's absolutely nothing about her statement that is unbelievable or not credible. I don't know who played with his mind, told it to do this, but I want, I just tell you, your people can never, never. Let me go over what the process is gonna be. Uh -huh. um, because her statements were so credible, mm -hmm. um, you're going to be charged with everything that said that you oh, did to God. her today. Um, you're going to be charged from the St. Cloud Police Department, and you're going to be charged from the Osceola County Sheriff's Office, and then, as part of the case with because you're in Orlando, the Orange County Sheriff's Office is going to be investigating what happened with So you got additional charges coming from everything that happened with um, potentially, so if she decides to report what happened locally, and I think they were up, you guys were never, he never even he close to that. You see, mm -hmm. so you got a pretty you good defense for from? that. But and and it's a pretty strong case against you. Um, they, they're making harsh allegations. Oh my God! And these allegations are life felonies. So when you get arrested for this, you're not going to have a bond, and. Um, if you're convicted, you can be sentenced to life in prison. Oh, my God. So when it goes... You know, it's sad to say. Yeah. You know? So, but I'm innocent to all this. Mm. Here's my opinion. Uh -huh. That you knew about this in June, that your wife knew about this in June. Your wife could not have been more nervous when we were at your house. She knew exactly why we were there. That's why she was so scared. And she didn't ask why we were there. She never asked. And neither did you. Yeah. Uh, well, I asked the West Coast to tell me we got to go for an interview. Yeah, it's all I told you. Know, so, so when the, even when okay, the, but the follow up question was normally why? Oh, what? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, I you just said, whoa, okay. So you've, uh, had, you've well, had six months to get it in your head that when you came in here, you were going to deny everything. No, and your no, wife is no, saying. It's not the idea, I deny it. It's not the idea, no, I don't deal it. Well, this isn't like we're just surprising yeah. you with this today. No, okay? no. You told us you've known about this for six months. So you just thought you were lucky that the police hadn't come to your house so far and that you were going to get away with it, that they weren't going to call the police on you. No, no, so no, you're only no, surprised no, today no, is that we actually showed up. No, no, I'm surprised, yeah, surprised because I don't know what's going on. You did know what was going on. No, no, you knew the that, second no. that we opened that door, your no, wife no, became no. extremely nervous. Oh, uh, so, she said, she said, she said, not a nervous woman, you know? Well, I'm charging you for... Um, that you um, put your penis no, in her vagina no, no, once. No. 
and tried three other times. No, that's um, not true. That you that's not true. oral sex on her. I'm sorry, I'll tell you, that's not true. I'm telling you what your charges are. Yeah, okay? yeah. And that you but, touched but, her outside of her clothing. She, she said you'd done pretty much everything to her since oh she was four years old. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know what's going on there. She was able to tell us what happened at what house. She described oh, the house. God. She described the room. She also told, her you were fi told us you were physically abusive to her when she tried to resist, oh tried to God. get away. That's not true. So. That's not true. Her story is pretty horrible. Oh no 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 no, that's not true. And the and the problem is is that the, the molestation is bad enough. Yeah. But you're someone that she was told to respect and love and trust. Someone that her dad that her dad respected and loved and trust. So it's not just that you molested her; it's that now you're going to do all that to her and then call her a liar. So the person in her life that one of the people in her life that you probably know, told her to tell know, the I truth. I don't call her a liar. I don't know what's going on in the head. I don't know what happened to them. I don't know. You know, they are accusing the wrong people, the wrong person. All of them are. Yep. No. All of them just out of the blue decided let's just accuse. I don't know. Get together there. I don't know. Oh, uh, none of this makes any sense to him. I love him today. I love her. I love See, if, you, if, if you love these people, you don't hurt them. I don't hurt them, believe me. And you definitely don't betray No, no, no. No way. By molesting his God, children. I never molested them. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. All right. Well, I can see you spent the last six months planning your story. No, no. So I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? I'll just close it up. Abraham continued to shamelessly deny the allegations that were clearly tearing his granddaughters apart, but he ultimately couldn't deny the evidence, and by the end of the investigation, he was hit with a grand total of 29 charges, including six counts of attempted sexual battery of a victim under 12, six counts of attempted lewd and lascivious molestation of a victim under 12, six counts of sexual battery or coercion of a minor, nine counts of lewd and lascivious molestation of a victim under 12, one count of lewd and lascivious conduct to a victim under 16, and one count of lewd and lascivious exhibition of a victim under 16. Abraham will hopefully be sitting in prison for quite a long time, and so will this next scumbag who decided that a kid's play area was the perfect place to get his rocks off. On August the 5th of 2023, police received a call to Riverwalk Park where a man was reportedly exposing himself in a vulgar and indecent manner in the splash pad area where numerous families were letting their kids play. We parked next to the car, I get out and it looked, it looked like he was, he had his dick in his hand, maybe I thought he was taking like pictures or something, his phone was off, okay. like at the steering wheel. So I'm like, I don't, I don't think that's what's going on, but let me just, I'm getting the kids out at the same time. So I get the kids out and I just, I just glance one more time and sure enough, you know, penis is in his hand, phone's out, his pants are down almost to his knees. So then that's when we look. When officers got to the scene, they located 49-year-old LaVon Glenn inside of his vehicle still parked near the splash pad area. Just out of curiosity, what brought you here to change your clothes? Davis. I, I, stop. Oh, 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 o
Lavon can now add fleeing and eluding on top of a felony charge of lewd and lascivious exhibition. Florida Statute Section 800.04 makes it a second-degree felony for anyone to intentionally expose the genitals in a lewd and lascivious manner in the presence of a victim who is less than 16 years of age. And with there being countless victims at the park, who knows how many felonies he could be facing, which is likely why he took off. Black Mazda. If you're not in the pursuit, 10-3. 12 Bravo, 15 Central. I think I have the vehicle westbound, ridge. Oh, you got to be done! Hey, we don't reach it! We don't reach it! Stop! We're still heading north. Get down! Stop! Loosen up. Loosen up and you won't get tased again. Loosen up. Loosen up. Every time you tense up, you're getting tased. Oh, Go ahead, bro. Hey, I'm not my keys. Hold on, drop the keys. I want my keys. Drop them. I don't want my keys, man. If you're not gonna have your keys, drop your keys, bro. Oh, come on, man. Drop them. Drop your keys. Thank you. Yeah, man. All right, well, you're putting yourself in terrible position. Uh, roll, roll forward. Okay, now pop the keys. All right, ready? I'm gonna send you up. Okay. One, two, three. You gotta help yourself, man. Yeah. Come on. Come on, sit down. Okay. Come on. Sit down. Okay, I'm dizzy. Come on, I know you're probably dizzy. Come on, you're good. Sit down. Sit down, sit down. Sit down, bro. Come on. You need to sit down. Sit, sit. Do you want to stand on? Okay. Oh, sorry. Come on. Sit down. Okay. Put that in on Levon sustained an injury to his head and was transported to the hospital. After receiving treatment, he was taken to the Volusia County Jail, where a look at his criminal record showed that he'd been incarcerated over a dozen times since 2002. He was then booked once again on a total of 10 charges, seven of them being felonies. These charges included resisting an officer, exposure of reproductive organs, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, battery of a law enforcement officer, fleeing and eluding, and possession of cocaine. His bond was set at $23,500. When predators can't get what they want in real life, they'll often resort to online interactions in the hopes of meeting in person. But that just leaves behind a trail of evidence that allows the police to quickly make an arrest. Hey. You Mr. Rios? Yeah, you have an arrest? You have a warrant for your arrest, Mr. Rios. On May the 31st of 2022, police responded to a T-Mobile store where their suspect was reportedly on the clock. They received a report from the parents of a 15-year-old girl stating that they found her texting and sending pictures to an adult male through Snapchat. Later, it would be revealed that the suspect, identified as David Antonio Rios, had used Snapchat to communicate with several other underage girls as well. What's up, bud? What's up, boy? Is that in your pocket? No, sir. Awesome. Mr. Rios? Yes, sir. You have an arrest? You have a warrant for your arrest, Mr. Rios. I do? Yes, sir. What is I'll explain it, it to you once we, get, my... once we get outside, I'll explain it to you, okay? Okay. You see your car? I'll just let you stick. Is there anything that you need from him? He keeps his badge and everything, right? We're okay. Okay. Keep us closer, David. So, he told you that you are under arrest. We have an arrest warrant for you, and we will talk about all of that. And you can ask as many questions as you want before we start talking because you are under arrest. And yeah, these fine. guys yeah. went into your place of work and all that. Well, I do have to read you your rights. Sure. Before any questions, you can wish. Okay. Do you still, is it okay if yeah, no, have a conversation? Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, have it. I want to know what's right. going on. Well, David, just to kind of like, for starters, is there anything that
that you can think of that would have brought us here today? I know you said you have a clean record. Has this been with, like, the Fuentes family? Is that um, what it is? So the charges that we're going to be arresting you on today are child solicitation by electronic communication device, meeting a child in person, oh, we're talking to them over the phone, um, enticement of a child, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Do any of those like who? Well? No. What is, I, I don't understand, like I'm not too fond of like, uh, like words like that. What does that mean? Like what do the charges mean? So the first one just means that basically... What is the electric communication device? What does that mean? Like a phone? Electronic, yes. So sorry. That, that's fancy language for, for a phone. For someone. For giving someone a phone? No. So this one, child solicitation means that, um, that you had potentially talked to somebody um, with your phone in a sexual manner. And that person was a child. No, I don't have any... I don't. Well, okay, so just to clarify, um, you are David Rios. Okay. Will you spell your last name for me? R-I-O-S, David Antonio Rios. So why don't you start from the beginning for me? So you had mentioned, like, this girl, um, how did, like, how did you guys meet? On the social media. Okay. On uh, Snapchat. I don't remember how it worked. Like, I, I didn't even talk to this girl for, like, more than a week at all like it was like that short of a time period right. and she was just like saying like hey you know I was getting abused and all of these things and and I just thought to myself like you know being the nice guy that I am I was like I need help the parents are asleep can you come over here and talk to me and I was like I guess because I'm just that nice guy like I just have the kindness of my heart like that's just the kind of guy I am and then, so, so help me understand sure. because I'm not that great at Snapchat. Sure. But when you said you guys met on Snapchat, so like, how does that I, work? so like you just add like a friend, right? And like you can add anybody, like okay. anybody. Like, do you search their name? No, well, like, there's, like, a list, right? It's, like, uh, it's called, like, you just press search, and then there's, like, a list. And, like, people's friends, like, pop up, and, like, you can add them. So, but, so, whoever added who, and then what happened after that? Did one of you message each other? Or how yeah, I, to be honest, I don't really remember. It's been a long, long time okay. since, like, February or January. I think it was February, to be honest. But, yeah, that's, uh, what did it happen? Uh, what was that initial, was there a conversation? Was it just... See, that's Snapchat what I don't remember. Pictures? It was, like, a week. Like, it was, like, within... I don't even think it was a week. I think it was, like, within, like, three days. Like, I don't even remember. David, do you still have that conversation? I don't. I, uh, we, uh, I had blocked her, um, and I, I don't know if she did the same for me, but I, I don't have anything on there no more. And once you block somebody, like, all their stuff, like, I don't even remember her username, to be honest, at this point. Like, I, I don't have any of that anymore, 100%. Do you remember her name? I don't. I really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm my brother that passed away. I, I don't. Um, just that? I um, believe so. No, like, phone numbers were exchanged? I don't believe so. Uh-uh. Okay. Um, I, I know for sure, 100%, it was Snapchat. Just, just through Snapchat? I, I believe so. Communication? I believe so. Okay. I don't remember. Uh, it, I may have texted her, but our main focus was on Snapchat. Like a lot of okay, so may, maybe. I, I may have. I don't have, like, f names saved, like, as okay. contacts, but it could be. You could potentially, like... Like, maybe if she had, like, a name, like, if you provided a name, like, maybe I could search it and it'll pull up because, like, you can search, like, contact. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. That would be part of when we do the phone sure. extraction on it. We would get that. So. Sure. So... If, if there's anything that you think is being, like, maybe misconstrued, or if I had it wrong, or anything. It's just like, hard to remember, me. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> one, I've literally met this girl, only, you know, seen her one time in my whole entire life, and that was it. Okay. So then you said you guys chatted through Snapchat for maybe less than a week. It's hard. Maybe a couple days. Like I, like like I said, like if you were saying like, what did your brother, you and your brother talked about? Like I can go back for a long time because I know what I talked. About. But like meeting one person one time, I don't remember all that information. I, I really don't. Like, I, was there anything else that could have been exchanged between you two? Like maybe photographs or um, anything like that? Uh, I don't believe so. Like voice messages, photographs, text messages. I don't believe so. 
like I said, I, I don't remember. Like, if you were to, like, pull, like, the conversation, like, if she still has her conversation, then I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's, like, what happened. But, like, I don't remember. But it, over the course of maybe a week, two weeks that you spoke with her, approximately, did it ever turn flirtatious? Did it ever turn sexual? Um, I, I just keep in mind, like, part of when we do these interviews, like, we have Snapchat, a lot of people think, like, you can conduct stuff on Snapchat and it's going to disappear potentially. That's not always the case. Sure. So what we do is we do search words through Snapchat. We just kind of want to verify with you, like, did those, did those conversations ever get sexual in nature? I don't remember. Could, it, could they have? It, it could. It could have, uh, but I don't remember. By your contact, when you met with her that evening, I know you guys said, you said you kind of drove down the street. Yeah, so we had drove. Off, right? Yeah, yeah, we had just drove right, th right, right, right there. David has just admitted to letting the victim sneak out to his car and taking her on a ride, but by doing so, he committed the felonious act of contributing to the delinquency of a minor, which according to New Mexico statute section 36.3, is any act that causes or tends to cause or encourage the delinquency of any person under the age of 18 years. Doing so could earn a suspect up to a year and a half in prison and $5,000 in fines. Any type of physical contact with her? Was there hand holding, hugging, something? There was hugging. There was hugging, like just being like, like here, like, do you need comfort? Like, that's what it was. That was all that there was. Okay, was there any physical hand What about like a kiss, even if she initiated it? No. No kiss. There was not. Like I said, it was just comfort, like, hey, you know, you, I know, I've seen people that have got abused before and it's, it just breaks my heart. Like I, like I said, I'm that guy and it just breaks my heart. She, she was talking about she was being abused by her family. Correct. She said, she said, I have to meet you when my dad is asleep because, or else he would hit me if I went outside. Did she, did she have any visible bruises when you met with her or anything like that? I didn't see. She was wearing, she was covered up. Okay. So. To clarify, at any point, did you ever say I remember that I think that she had sent, I never sent anything inappropriate, I did. I remember she had sent me a picture um, once um, where she was like in, like it wasn't even like, it, I guess you could just like say like shorts, I wouldn't even call it underwear, like she was just in shorts and I think that was like the most inappropriate thing that, that was there, like as far as picture wise. So she was clothed? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I believe, she, yeah. And it was just like, I think like a, like a sports bra, I would say, and like shorts. Like, okay. that was it. Did you ask for that picture? No. I never asked for it. Did you she had sent, she had said, I was like, hey, could I like see some pictures of you, just like as you, of you as a person? And that's what she had saved that image for It automatically. Where does she live? She lives right there on, uh, what was the address? My mom took a screenshot of it because I had gave it to her. It was right there on, uh, it's kind of near a gun club. What was, what was the plan? The plan was just to talk to her and be like, hey, you're getting abused, like, here's how to help. Because I think she was just so scared, like, that I was going to tell or that, you know, she didn't know who to run to. And I just thought, well, I'm here to help and, uh, you know, I, I'm going to. There, when Justin asked you, he said, um, did you guys ever exchange photographs? Was the conversation flirting or photographs exchanged? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and then you said, no, that's inappropriate. And I, maybe I misunderstood you, so I have you help me understand that a little bit better. I don't, I don't, I don't remember that, sorry. Okay. Like that. Okay. I don't know, I've just, I've just, like, my mind's gone right now. Like, seeing this, like, it's just shocking to me, especially how far I've come in life. You know, I've been working three years as management, I just got two cars, doing well for myself. Like this is like, I, I, like I always see it like on those shows, like Beyond Scared Straight and like all these like jail shows. Like I, was like, I, ne I never wanted to do it. Well, I have a little bit of some of the chats in this document okay. that maybe we could review really sure. quick and then maybe we could get going. Oh, sent you six pictures of herself. These appear to be selfies, facial selfies, and just her face, uh -huh. um, and then to which some of them include maybe some other people. Do you recall? I don't remember the family ones. I just remember like the selfies and stuff like that. Okay. And, um, and then at this time, so at like two o'clock in the morning on January 23rd, you send to her. It won't be till like 9:30, 10. That's so better than what I 
about seven hours. Nine, 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 nine thirty. So yeah. When you were going to go to her house. Uh, okay. And then um, at eleven twenty-two. I'm sorry. This this kind of goes backwards, I guess. Um, but she had sent you a picture saying, "Warning: If you kiss my neck, I'm not responsible for happening." What happens next? It took being confronted with physical evidence of his predatory behavior for David to finally admit that he was a creep. But despite all that, David still insisted he was a good person and that the victim simply misunderstood his intentions. Do you think that message from her, how does that influence your decision to go meet her in the house? It's horrible. Can you, can you explain what you mean? Like, it's not, it's not good to, to I, I, you know, and, and to be honest with you, it wasn't right to go over there. I'm going to be honest, it was not right to go over there, especially with the age difference, I, I get it. Uh, I just thought, you know, hey, I'm going to do what I can do to, to help her in her situation. And like that, that's inappropriate, you're right. Well, but help us understand, to sure. you, what does that mean? Because like to different people, that message it can come off, yeah, things. it can come so off it, like... in that moment when like, you did... Like sexual. Okay. Like that's what it can come off. And in that message, so it said like, I'm not responsible for what happens next. Like what, what is going to happen Like in her viewpoint? Because she's sure. the one that had said sure. that. Sure. I didn't say that. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't... Maybe she was thinking sexual. Okay. I mean, I don't know what next can be. So, I mean, you, you've been really honest with us, I think, up to this point. Like, we appreciate that, David. Sure. Again, this is, if you read the warrant, that's kind of what the charge, you, you kind of admitted, like, you know, may, may have been wrong to go be with her. That's, just, that's what the charge in the was. Sure. That's what we with her. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I, like, like you said, it's, it's right there. I, it's just not, that was not my intention. We're not, we're not excusing anybody pointing guns at you. I mean, you guys ask me the questions. I'm, I'll, I'll be as honest as I can. Can you do something? Sure. Do, do you have questions for us? I, I don't. I'm just. I, I don't. I, I don't. I'm, I'm just so lost for words. Like, like I said, you ask any one of my. You go in there and you ask anybody about me, and I'm the nicest, friendliest person you can meet. My family, my friends, like anybody, everybody you've ever met, never would say I never had a mean thing in my body. I've never been against anyone. My Stick off? Yeah. Okay. Well, we will go ahead. Are you ready to go to... Okay. Let me make sure I have all your stuff. So and is your... AirPods? Yeah, AirPods. Okay. And then phone, which we have to take. Yeah, and then watch. That watch. goes with the phone. And then just my jacket. And then my wallet's right there on the back of the phone if you need my ID or anything. And my bank cards. It, it just comes off. It's a magnet. Yeah, you can just pull it off. It's just a magnet. We'll probably leave that with you. Oh, sure. Oh, that's pretty cool. That is cool. But yeah, no, and then other and then there's nothing else, and you could look. I don't do drugs. I don't do none of that either. So oh, that's you guys are you guys. Yeah, I'm not like one of those guys you pull out and they got all kinds of stuff in there. <laughs> I mean, given the circumstances, officers would probably prefer to be there to talk about drugs. But at least another predator was taken off the streets after David was transported to jail and booked on charges of enticement of a child, soliciting a child by electronic communication device, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. As unexpected as his arrest was, the next suspect, on the other hand, actually thought the police would believe that he just wanted to be the victim's friend. He's uh, trying to make fun of you. How'd he do that? Just talk to him, ask him, role model and stuff. On April the 7th of 2022, 48-year-old Sylvester Prince was confronted after being caught up in an online sting operation. An agent posing as an underage decoy messaged Sylvester on a dating app, almost immediately disclosed that she was 13. Sylvester proceeded to indulge the decoy in conversation, which turned explicit and even exchanged pictures with the decoy before agreeing to meet up. But they weren't though, because I, I just told you that those other people just said, that those other people just said that they were gonna take this girl and you said they never said that. And I know they didn't say that. No, I, I never said it. I know you didn't. Can I ask you something? 
how, uh, how come you didn't want the cops being called? If you're, you haven't done any of these messages, how come you are so don't want the police here? I won't be in no trouble. Why, but why would you get in trouble if you didn't do any of this? You just want to... No, no, come on, come on, come on, you got to talk Yeah, you can't run, man. Come on. How you doing, sir? How's it going? Uh, so this, this, this individual here has been messaging a lot of kids on the internet throughout the years. Including our, including our, we have it all on film, we have everything, and we have messages here where he's trying to solicit a young girl for sex. Uh, you have some ID with you? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you live here? I'm in trouble. Huh? I'm in trouble. Well, that's, I'm just here to find out what's going on, okay? Do you live here? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, any weapons on you? Let me mm -hmm. check you real quick, okay? What's going on here? Kids on the internet. 13 year old. I don't know why you would snitch on your own brother. 13 years old. He's been chatting with. Well, you, you, you guys, you got any proof? How you going to arrest him? We, we literally tried to show you this the first second we were here. I'm just here to find out what's going on because I don't know either, okay? The officer then places Sylvester inside the patrol car before questioning him further about why he was called, and Sylvester proceeds to lie through his teeth about every detail of the situation, despite there being physical evidence. So what? People been using my name okay. and stuff and making Facebooks and stuff. That's just a uh, one girl. She uh, used my Facebook, my phone number, okay. and made a uh, Facebook and everything. Okay, so you said somebody's been using your Facebook? Yes, sir. Okay, who's the person that's been using your Facebook? It's some uh, girl, and she made a uh, Facebook. A girl that lives here with you? No, I don't know where, because a lot of people got my uh, phone number. But you don't know who the girl is? No, sir. So this is supposed to be going on on Facebook? Yes. Okay. And uh, they opened the Me24 account on my name too. Okay. When did this start? I think a couple years ago. A couple years? Did you ever do a report on it? Yes. You did. A, you reported to the police what's going no, on? Not the police. I don't know. Report to Facebook. Do you have a Facebook account now? I have one, but it got deleted. Okay, but no, you don't so have an active one right now? No. Okay. Because uh, somebody, they uh, keep me off Facebook. Okay. Why did they kick you off Facebook? Because I had people using my number, and they had uh, like three or four accounts open up in my name. Where's your phone at now? It's uh, in the house. In the house, okay. She been, somebody been messing me yesterday, sir. Huh? They been messing me yesterday by deleting their messages. Somebody sent you messages yesterday? Yes, sir. And they want to meet up with me. And I, I had a lot of work over here to do. And that was the extent of the message? Yes, sir. And she uh, kept messing me like uh, last night, all night long. And I never did uh, mess her back. Cause I had like three or four messages from her. See, I've been uh, trying to look for another uh, job. <coughs> Cause uh, my job uh, at uh, Skyview, it's it closed down, and I'm been trying to do everything, because I've never been in no trouble. I just don't want to get in no trouble and stuff. While the officer was sitting up front looking through explicit messages between this 48-year-old man and his supposed underaged girl, Sylvester pulled out the ultimate escape card for any predator who's been caught red-handed. I just wanted to be her friend. Ha! <laughs> Works every time, doesn't it? How long have they been messaging you? For about a week or two. 
a week or so? Yes, sir. She, uh, I met her on uh, meet 24. On what? Meet 24. Meet 24? Yes, sir. Like M E E T 24? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to be like a friend to him. That's all. A friend to her? Yes. Nothing else. Okay. Just like a role model or something like that. Cause see, uh, I've I've been cheated on a lot in the past. Huh? I've been cheated on in a lot in the past okay. by my ex girlfriend. And I just want to be a role model to uh, younger people and tell them what I've been through or they won't have to go through the same thing I went through. I just want to just be friends with everybody. That's it. Cause see, she wanted to meet up with me uh, yesterday, but I said I got a lot of work to do. And I... I didn't want to meet up with nobody. How, how old is this girl you were talking to? I don't know, sir. She told me she was 13. She said she was 13? Now I stopped talking to okay. her. So your phone's in the house? Yes, sir. All right. Can I get it? Yes, sir. Okay. Can I uh, go get it for you? Huh? Can I get out and get it for you? Uh, just Do they know where it's at? No, just me. Huh? Just me. Where's it at? It's in my bedroom. In your bedroom where? Because uh, the phone, okay. she uh, kept texting me last night. And I wouldn't answer the text. Okay. And it's on, it's on my phone where she was uh, texting me and, and calling me. You okay. can uh, see it. Okay, so where's your phone at in your room? It's in my bedroom. In your bedroom. In the bed. Not in my that. cabinet. Huh? In my cabinet. Did, will they know where to look? No, just me. I can uh, go get it. Huh? I can go get it and come back and give it to you. Because I got some uh, pictures of girls, what they uh, sent me on there. You do? It, the ones but, they were sending you? Yeah, but it's uh, uh, grown ups. Yeah, she uh, texted me like uh, five times last night and tried to call me at uh, like 12 something last night. Sylvester repeatedly emphasized that the decoy messaged him the night before and that he didn't answer, likely in an attempt to paint himself as a morally righteous person while simultaneously making the victim look like the pursuer. However, since a minor cannot consent to such behaviors with an adult, the adult will always be held responsible, no matter who's driving the interaction. Cause she uh, told me she was in uh, Oklahoma City <coughs> and she wanted to uh, meet up with me. At a uh, park uh, over by Children's Hospital. But I had uh, other things to do, but I didn't want to meet up with her. All right, so let's let's go in. We'll get your phone. Uh, okay. That way we've got it in case we need it. Okay. And I, I can show you where she was texting me last night. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She just texts me just now. Okay. Let me see. What time did was that? Like just a few minutes ago? And we see our text and that was yesterday. Hmm. I just didn't want to get in no trouble or nothing. I'm just trying to be uh, like friends to people. That's all. Nothing else. Here or what? Just around the world. 
around the world? Just uh, trying to make friends. But how do you meet friends around the world? I just uh, get on like Facebook, random people, whoever uh, accept me as a friend. Random adults and random yeah. kids or what? Uh, adults. I, I ain't trying to talk to no kids. Cause, see that one right there, she, she told me thir she was 13. Uh, I, I didn't want to talk to her no more. She, uh, see, she wanted to uh, meet How me. did you meet her? On uh, Me24. Me24? Is that like a dating app or what? Yes. It's supposed to be like a grown-up dating app. Yeah. And uh, a lot of kids were going on. That. Through the Me24 or whatever, she yes. you exchange phone numbers? Yes. Because she uh, asked me for my phone number, she, and she wanted to uh, text me. What all did you text her? Just like, let me see your sexy little toes and stuff. Your sexy little toes? Hey, yeah, just as a friend. Officers were going to search his phone as soon as they got back to the police station and Sylvester already knew what they would find. So he decided to get out ahead of it and drop that disturbing bomb on the officer himself. But his attempts to save face don't really matter, as they won't make a difference in his sentencing. He's just making the prosecution's job a whole lot easier. It's a little friendly, isn't it? I didn't want to do nothing with it. Because I say that to everybody I talk to on there. You see your sexy little toes? <laughs> I know they're kind of... Yeah, I mean, some people have um, their different things, I guess. Yeah, I just like... Like toes, huh? With, like, sexy legs and sexy toes. My key is grown-ups. Did she send you pictures of her sexy toes? One, then I deleted it because I didn't want it. It's not like you can probably tell by looking at toes how old somebody is. No. I just be talking to them as a friend. Like if they are going through something, I just talk to them and say, tell them why I've been through. Yeah. I see a uh, ex girlfriend, she uh, cheated on me. Yeah. And uh, she had uh, another man in my bed. Uh, having sex when I got home from work. seen you for the rest of my life since then, and that been 12 years ago. I ain't trying to get no relationship. Yeah, yes, right. sir. Yeah, all right, come on this way. All right, I'm going to have a seat in there. Sylvester was taken to the police station where he would be charged with facilitating sexual conduct with a minor by use of technology. And according to his registry profile, he was apparently found guilty a year later. And though his sentence is unknown, he is to remain registered as an offender until the year 2058. It's safe to say that Sylvester won't be making any new friends for quite a while. Thankfully, he didn't make it as far as the next weirdo, who was getting very friendly with several random strangers at an amusement park. So are you involved in an altercation downstairs? On June the 10th of 2023, police received a report that a male suspect had inappropriately touched several people at the Cedar Point Amusement Park, one of whom was an underage girl waiting in line for the Raptor roller coaster. When police arrived, the suspect, Wesley Kroos, was already enjoying another ride, so they waited right at the exit to grab him as soon as he disembarked. We think, unless you have a different description. Uh, guy with lots of arm tattoos and a beard. Arm tattoos and a beard. Excuse me, sir. Officer O'Connell, Sinusky, please. Can you step over here, please? Right. So, are you involved in an altercation downstairs? Yeah. So, no, no, kind of, no kind of fight, anything like that going on? Okay. Okay, all right, I can see that. So, so do, you, do you know I'm speaking with you at all? Or you, did you have any kind of disagreement with somebody? Any kind of confrontation? Okay, do you have an idea on you? 
So you get you got a warrant through Richland County. I don't know what it's for, but they want you, so we gotta place you into custody, okay? Gotcha. Yeah, so somebody reported that they got into some sort of confrontation with you, but they don't want to press charges, so it's over and done with. You don't got to worry about it. The initial call was in reference to an earlier altercation where Wesley was accused of standing alarmingly close to a man and rubbing his torso. He also allegedly rubbed his buttocks against that of a man's girlfriend. When finally confronted by the male victim, Wesley then reportedly punched him in the face before fleeing the area. But in a rather karmic twist, he wasn't being charged for any of that, but instead for a warrant the officer found for failing to appear at sentencing for a drug charge. <laughs> Come on, man. One more. We gotta go speak to the judge. Bro. <laughs> Warrants that, warrant, dude. No, I don't work for Richland that's, County. That's made up right there. A possible drunk? No, it said it's uh, the warrant is failure to appear for dangerous drugs. Thank so you did, did you skip a court date? No, I, I'm on papers. Okay, then you can go tell the judge about it. I don't know, man. I, I'm not from around there. Go ahead and open it all the way. Uh. Face the car, please. Do you have a season pass, Wesley? Uh, no, it's just, uh, uh, dead things. Following Wesley's arrest and removal from the park, the security staff were approached by a 16-year-old girl with a picture of Wesley on her phone, a picture she reportedly taken after he assaulted her as well. The victim claimed that Wesley repeatedly rubbed his hand across her legs in private area, and after confirming that the picture was indeed Wesley, he would then be charged with sexual imposition. One might expect that pedos would be perusing an amusement park, but this next case proves the threat can be much closer to home it could even be your own neighbor. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. On July the 29th of 2022, neighbors of 51-year-old Regan Beresford contacted police when they found out that he had been sending their underage child inappropriate messages and pictures, and even offering the child money in exchange for stuff. Upon notifying the police, a detective assumed the victim's identity and continued to message with Reagan. The conversations became more explicit until the decoy agreed to meet up with him at a 7-Eleven on September the 1st of 2022. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Put your hands behind you. Get out of the car. Put your sunglasses down. Put your hands behind you. Go with him. He's in custody. Did you block it? I did. All right, go ahead. Put it inside. She's coming here, right? I have no idea. Five minutes she'll be here. If you want me to take his phone out of the car, just leave it now until she gets here. Leave it there, make sure it's ready. Yeah, I'm not staying with the car. Just got his wallet. Yeah, just wallet. Tell her to get a search warrant for it. Yeah, that's fine. He had it in his hand when I walked up on him. Where is it now? I need to get back in the car. I, he said, I no, just want to set it down so I can take him out and put him in the We're towing the car. Press, 
stuff I want to do. Alright. I'm going to stretch you again, okay? Inside there, except I'm going to take more time to empty out your pockets and everything, okay? If I do find something in your, in your, you know, person that you're not telling him about, it's another charge on you, okay? So you might as well be, be up front and tell me right now if you have anything on you. You don't have anything on you? Okay. Go ahead and move to your left. Reagan was then escorted inside the police station where he was questioned and eventually confessed to sending the text messages and pictures. He would then be charged with traveling to meet after the use of a computer to lure a child, using a computer to seduce, solicit, or lure a child, and transmission of information harmful to minors. Having a predator in the neighborhood can upset an entire community, but imagine how the news shook the entire state of Oklahoma when they found out their senator was preying on young boys. You show up with condoms, he shows up with lotion. I mean, that's not true. Hold on. Yeah, there was condoms in your bag. Now, cop saw them. They're, that's just not absolutely not true. I did not show up there for any sexual thing. On March the 9th of 2017, the parents of a 17-year-old boy phoned the police reporting that their son had snuck off to a motel with an unknown man. Officers responded to the local Super 8 motel and found the suspect's room, but they never expected to find 36-year-old Oklahoma Senator Ralph Shorty inside of the room with the teenager. The room smelled like marijuana, which the senator allegedly admitted smoking. Upon separating the two and returning the young man to his parents, Senator Ralph then turned himself in later that morning. You know, the, uh, the young man I was with, I know, has, uh, you know, I've known him for, we've been talking, he's come to the coffee shop that I operate a couple times. Uh, shoot, I've even had him over to my house play video games before. Um, had no idea, told me when I first met him that he was 20. Oh, Actually, what I asked him was, I said, are you minor? And he said, no, let me go talk to them. And I said, okay. And um, he went out there and that's, you know, I, I don't know what they talked about, but um, I asked him to check his ID. So again, I've never, never even thought to ask him for, for his ID. There's no reason to. Um, so after that, um, um, one of the men uh, Sergeant something, I can't remember his last name, he's he bald. Um, he lectured quite a deal. At that point, I, I was, you know, again, blood pressure. Um, I had to sit down, couldn't, couldn't even really, I don't even honestly remember what I said to him. They asked me at some point if they could search the, um, the room. I had my computer bag with me, and one of the men searched my computer bag as well as the room, um, as far as I know. There was so you say, you, how long you known the guy? It's been definitely over a year. Okay. What What do you know him about? What's his name? You know his last name? No. He's been over my coffee shop a couple times. Um, he, uh, I know that he had been uh, arrested for drug dealing in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that he had dropped out of high school. Um, you know, he was trying to get a uh, a GED. Um, I was trying to help him do that. In fact, when we first met, I was trying to help him study and things like that for the GD. Um, and then when I lost contact with him for four or five months, when I guess when he went to California or wherever, um, I just assumed that he had, you know, I didn't know that's where he, where he went. Well, how did y'all meet? At the coffee shop. I'm, I'm pretty sure of, of that. Um, but what coffee shop are you uh, That's my guy on the coffee shop. Oh, well, on, it's called Holy Ground. I'm pretty sure that's how we met. I, I honestly don't remember. Um, when he came back, you know, he um, he was, well, in fact, he told me he wanted to go be an anesthesiologist or something. And I you know, said, so you've got to get, you can't go without a high school diploma. You can't do anything without a high school diploma. I know that the day after the incident happened, he was going to test for the GED. Um, how do you, when you, when you, do you text him or how do y'all communicate? Usually phone calls. Phone calls? Okay. It's here that Senator Ralph just made his first big mistake as the papers sitting right underneath the detective's left elbow proved that they did much more than just talk on the phone. In fact, it almost unequivocally proves that the senator was engaging in solicitation of a minor for prostitution, which applies to anyone under the age of 18, even though the age of consent in Oklahoma is 16. Well, it's interesting because um, on his tablet, he has a conversation that he says he's had, that he had with you using an app called Kick. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. He's 
pretty lengthy conversation on his tablet that uh, he says is with the guy that is you that he um, <coughs> that is the online or the kick kick idea is Jamie Tilly. Um, and you told the officers that night that that's who looked what your online he, he calls me Jamie. Uh huh. And I'm not sure why. Okay. And um, anyways, so we we've got a conversation between him and this Jamie Tilly about um, he says I need money for spring break. Uh, Jamie Tilly says I don't uh, really have any legitimate things I need help with right now. Would you be interested in sexual stuff? He says yes. This goes on about how I can get you. Blah blah blah. Um, we go on. He says uh, he starts calling this guy Daddy. He says hurry up, Daddy. I'm super horny. Uh, hey, keep me updated because I want you bad, Daddy. Uh, the guy named Jamie Tilly says I'm going to uh, I'm going to fuck you like a good little boy if you keep calling me Daddy. This goes on and on and on and on. Well, then it gets to the end. It says <coughs> it says okay, I'll be down the street, a couple houses in about 10 minutes or so. He says, okay, um, so I have, so I have, let me know, so I have an idea. Then that person says, I-35 about the exit in Forest, at 4th Street. And then it says, I'm here. Well, um, we've got a witness, <coughs> pardon me, we've got a witness that sees him get in a white Grand Cherokee, and they follow that white Grand Cherokee to Hagen saying he was talking to you. We got a witness putting you, picking him up at the same time that this message was sent saying I'm here. So I, I kind of got to say that Jamie Tilly's you. It's not me. It's not you. It's okay. We communicated by phone. Um, there, there was no sexual intention that night. When first confronted with the name Jamie Tilly, Senator Ralph essentially corroborated the idea that he was Jamie. <clears throat> he, there's a pretty lengthy conversation on his tablet that uh, he says is with the guy. Is the online or the kick kick idea is Jamie Tilly. Um, and you told the officers that night that that's who looked what your online. He, he calls me Jamie. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure why. Okay. And now when asked to confirm his identity as Jamie, he vehemently denies it. From there, the detectives begin laying on more heat. So how did you eat? Um, I want to say it was at our coffee shop. Okay. Uh, so, like he just walks in, you guys take up a conversation, become friends? Yeah, that's happened many times. Invite him over to your house. Has your wife met him? I think so. Okay. Now, you say he's come to your house several times to play video games. I think just once. Come to your house once to play video games. What if I said that he told you you guys met through a Craigslist ad the very first time yeah. that he posted in Casual Encounters? No. Okay. The, in this, can, can I add, is, mm -hmm. is he legitimately underage? Yeah. And he was the first time that he met him, and I said, 16. I, I asked him, I said, hey, does he know how old you were? And he said, yeah, he knows, because we had a discussion about it, and at first he was uncomfortable with it, but then he finally got over it. In this conversation, it says, she needs me to go to the store for her. My three-year-old is sick. That's one of the things I've been dealing with tonight. We're not going to have enough time. Can we get together tomorrow, May, after one? <clears throat> I'll get, I'll get even, I'll get a hotel room or something if that would make it easier. Um, he goes on talking about coffee shop, coffee shop my coffee shop. Um, I'll be alone in about 10 minutes at my coffee shop. About five months. Okay. So he's telling me that when he first met you through Craigslist that, you, that he had posted an ad in Casual Encounters and that he had a lot of responses for it, but that you said that you wanted him to mess around with your wife while you watched. He said that he showed up to do that, or you guys got together and started talking about that. He found out your wife was pregnant, and then said that that never happened because she was pregnant. So here's the deal, Ralph. You and I both know what the truth is, and the truth is not what you're telling us. These texts when you when this kick account about your kids and your kid being sick and your coffee shop and that you got customers left and that you close at eight. I mean, it's clearly you. It's clearly and we've got a witness that puts you there. When you I, say I absolutely picked him up. When you say I'm here, the witness is waiting down the street because she thought it was jacked up. He says it's you. 
that he's talking to. You show up with condoms, he shows up with a lotion. I mean, that's not true at all. Yeah, there was condoms in your bag. Now, cop saw them. They're, that's just not absolutely not true. I did not show up there for any sexual thing. Well, then there's also weed that was in a green plastic container. Marijuana that was in a green plastic container with labels from Colorado that was in the room. Did you ever touch that bottle? No. So there's no way your fingerprints will be on it? No. Okay, because okay, we have the bottle. I don't know what to touch. He says, matter of fact, he says when the police knocked on the door that y'all were smoking, y'all were both smoking marijuana. He said that he brought a gram when you brought a gram, and you guys rolled a huge blunt. And that you guys were planning on messing around and just hadn't got there yet. And that he was going to do you a favor by whatever it was you guys were going to do. And that you were going to do him a favor by kicking him some money for spring break. I just don't know why he would do that. I honestly don't know. Because it's true. It's true. Jamie, clearly, is you and I can prove it. So at, at minimum, you met with a guy at a hotel to pay him for sex. At a minimum. At a minimum. Of the church. Yeah, within the thousand feet of the church, which is a felony. And they're not lying. To add insult to injury, Oklahoma Statute Section 211031 turns an otherwise misdemeanor prostitute charge into a felony when done within 1,000 feet of a school or church. I don't want, I don't want to be here not giving you an opportunity to, to set the straight, set, set it straight and tell the truth. It doesn't sound like anything I say is going to help. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, the truth helps. And just so you know that there's also exchanged dick pics at one point. Um, and when you, hopefully you didn't take a picture of your dick with your phone because that's going to tag it whenever you send it to somebody. No, I don't. I don't do that. Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I, I don't. I don't understand why he would do this. I really don't. It's just, and he said he knows you because, you know, like you're saying, coffee shop, all that. So you guys smoked weed on the second floor of the coffee shop in the past. I just don't understand why he would do that. He has nothing to gain from this. Have you got your phone with you right now? No. Where is it at? Uh, honestly, I lost it. <clears throat> lost your phone? Because you and I both know it would be on that phone. There's nothing on that phone. You can tag it or whatever. Huh? So how did you, if that's not you, how did you contact him last night? Or that night? I think he called me. He didn't have a phone. I'm sure he called me. That's all I can say. I don't know. How did he know that you were outside? He, well, he called me, and I told him I was on my way. I told him I'd be there at a certain amount of time, and I got there. Did you Did you use this phone that you've lost? That was the only phone I had. This 219 number, you say you lost the, the handset? After I called you, I apparently have left it on top of my car or something. I tried to find it because I needed to call uh, someone else. See, this reason I lost it. Yeah, I talked to you when I was um, about to leave my house. Um, and I went back and looked on the ground. I... Have you talked to him since that night? No. I honestly would have loved to have talked to his parents. Um, I had no idea that he was still with his parents. I wouldn't have been with a minor. Well, you knew that he was kicked out of high school. Yeah, I didn't know I knew that. Well, he told me he dropped out of high school. Okay, you knew that he dropped out of high school. Mm -hmm. And that he was trying to get his GED. Right. How old did you think he was? 20. Well, he's, when, when, I, when we met, he told me he was 20. On March the 16th of 2017, Ralph was hit with felony charges of soliciting a minor for prostitution, transporting someone for prostitution, and prostitution within 1,000 feet of a church. He resigned six days later, ending his seven-year run as senator, and his wife filed for divorce soon after. However, that wasn't the end of the story. 
Police did some more digging and found out that the hole was much deeper than they thought, and the senator actually had a five-year history of using fake identities to both receive and send lewd images and videos of underage children. They also found his posts from the casual encounter section of Craigslist, where the married father of four posted things like, we can be guy friends to everyone else, but privately we have fun. This could even be a daddy-son type of thing behind closed doors. One post even proclaimed, the younger the better. You, did you, you asked me about email conversations earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to find something for you guys. I, is there anything there that shows what I'm saying? on email, because I honestly don't remember if I ever emailed him. Yeah, there's shit ton of emails on that thing, and I think, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. sure. That's all I was asking, if you remember anything. Uh, I, I gave the officer my email address the other night. Um, I guess I'll search and see if there's any, I'm just, and I can't think of any other proof that I can show you. There's nothing, because there's no, I mean. There absolutely would be. If what, we have, had, what we have is the truth. If I had phone calls or if I had. But you don't, because they don't exist. What we have is the truth. You know it. You know that's I never would have thought to have to, to record a phone call or anything with a guy. I mean, he's. It was recorded. That's what we've got pictures of. I'm the conversation was recorded. That's you. Anyone we show that to is going to know that's you. Well, that's the problem. It's like, not a problem. It's the truth. What, what I'm saying is the problem is is that for some reason, you think that if you stick your head in the sand and ignore it, it's going to go away. It's not. Your best bet is to tell us the truth, tell us what happens, and then move on from this. Make this a bump in the road, not the road. But the reason you're having trouble thinking of something to say is because you know there's nothing you can I'm say. I'm having trouble thinking of something to say. I'm trying to you're trying to decide whether or not you should tell us what happened. No, I've told you everything. Okay. Okay. Are we done? After finding out what was on Senator Ralph's device, these officers ended up dropping their charges against him, and instead he was federally indicted on one count of child sex trafficking and three counts of child pornography, and he initially pleaded not guilty and a jury trial was set for December of 2017. But then, he accepted a plea deal a month before and was sentenced to 15 years in prison, followed by 10 years of supervised probation. He was also ordered to pay $5,100 in fines and has to register as an offender upon release. Ralph did everything to avoid his own arrest, but in the end, he was caught red-handed. Likewise, the next suspect was also delusional enough to think that he could run away from his problems, but literally. On June the 9th of 2023, Walmart security contacted police after catching some extremely disturbing footage on the security cameras. A male suspect was taking upskirt photos of unsuspecting women and touching them inappropriately, which included a 16 and 11 year old girl in the toy aisle. He just did it again. He just did it again to these, to these two females right what's, here. what's he doing? Walking around grabbing He's right there. This dude here? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the work? He just walked he in. Oh, he's taking pictures of her. Yeah, he's taking pictures of her for start. All right, yeah. Well, that's oh, that's he's done. That's good. That's good. Okay. Just stay off that. Okay. Just wait. A guy like this might get freaky, dude. Just yeah. stand back away. Oh. The man they're looking for is 33-year-old Gary Moultrie, a registered offender in Georgia since 2020. He'd actually been inside the Walmart the day before engaging in similar activities, but escaped before he could be confronted. Now, there were several officers closing in on him. Merchandise. Move, move. 
I him? I'm coming. I've got him at the garden center. I'm coming. Stop! Stop! It is, it Stop! Is, my daughter is like right there, and she needs some help. Now. Glasses, black shirt, camo pants, she black help. shoes. Now. He's running back the other way. All right, he's go he's going back into Walmart. No! Stop! My daughter needs some help, man. You're not listening. 10-4, he's running around the garden center. If I get someone else over here. Stop right there! My daughter is in trouble. Roll over on your Roll over! <laughs> Gary was brought to the ground by a taser and upon realizing he was caught, proceeded to smash his phone on the ground in an attempt to destroy the evidence. He'll probably feel pretty dumb when he realizes that viewing the files on a phone is as easy as plugging it into a computer with a USB cable. <laughs> He broke the phone, so. One more unit, so far. Code four. We have one man, to, one male detained. Okay. Okay. Hold on, hold on. You're bending my leg. You're bending my arm. Hold on. You're situated. Yeah. Here, I got his leg cap. Stand still. I'm pulling these out, all right? All right. We'll stand you up, okay? Alright. Sit up. Scary Put your hands. I, I kept doing it till I got here. No, no. I don't either. I'm out. You want me to fix his cuffs? Are oh, they double locked? No. Double, go ahead and double lock. So what's that the rest of you for? Sexual battery. I was like, I don't see anyone over here. So I was like, I'm gonna hang out over here. And then she's like, he's coming. So as soon as I got in, she closed it. Gary was transported to the police station without further incident and charged with sexual battery, and his criminal record dated back as far as 2016, including other deplorable actions such as child molestation, statutory rape, and enticing a child for indecent purposes. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one, and don't forget to subscribe.